Welcome to After Dark Podcast. Um, before we start this episode, uh, this is the first episode on our second season. And so I just want to thank the production manager, Dean and Gray, and uh, the other staff that we have working together on this. Um, but um, anyways, thank you, Sour Starhead, for being here. Why don't you guys go ahead and uh, just introduce yourself and kind of, uh, you know, say a little bit about how you guys met and let's, uh, you know, and then just introduce the first song and we'll go into it. No, rock and roll. Uh, My name's Noah. I play guitar and I sing. My name's Gary and I also play, sing, and I bass. I play, I (laughs) sing, and I bass. That's good to know. Speaking to your little... uh, your snare mic. Uh, hello, I'm Riley, <laughs> and I drum, and that's what I do. He says his name is Riley, and he plays drums. <laughs> uh, I met me and Noah met at Colin uh, a few years back, and uh, and then we met Riley on this website. Yeah, what well, website was it? It was a band mix because I I needed to find a drummer, hmm. and like half it's like fifty year old dudes that are have like ponytails and cowboy hats and they're like I just want to play some Texas dirt rock and I'm like nah <laughs> so luckily I found Riley and then I just cold hard messaged him on Instagram and I was like hey I'm not trying to be weird but if you left your Instagram so like I texted you so we should totally jam together sometime and uh, then I invited him over to my apartment and this uh, is back when we had her set up in our apartment. Yeah. So we would literally like have practices. Yeah, full on, like in a two. Like I mean, like we were on the bottom floor, so we got away with it. But if we were on the like second, if anything else, we would have been shut down. So yeah, quick. I mean, oh wow, oh yeah, like and I mean, like we were doing like full volume practices. Like we yeah, weren't. That shit got loud sometimes. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> we had like, we had like an eight p.m. cutoff that we respected, and our neighbors were super cool about it. Yeah, so. surprisingly, there, we had a lot of uh, of our neighbors like pretty much like. Oh, are you guys the band? You guys sound so good. You know, like yeah. <laughs> they were so nice. And you were the band of the complex. Yeah, <laughs> like and our, and our dog got out one time, and this chick was talking to us. And we're like, oh, hey. she was like, oh, are you guys the band? We're like, yeah, we're so sorry, we're so loud. Like, hope it's not disturbing me. She's like, oh, you guys are only my worst neighbor. That asshole that lives above me. Fuck that guy. I was like, all right, yeah, fuck that guy. We're cool, we're sweet. <laughs> That's funny. Well, uh, what's the name of this first song? Uh, this one is uh, Doomsday Procedure, written by our very own beautiful Gary Robbins. Uh, it's off our upcoming EP, Snafu. Uh, Just released it as a single, actually, yeah, a few and, weeks ago. And music video ago. last week. Uh, and thanks music to, video. To a, thank you, Attic Space, by the way. Love you, Abraham. He's such a great visual artist, and we are going to keep working with him. <laughs> but the whole theme of the uh, EP is kind of World War II-y, fucking throwing mm. grenades in trenches and shit, and dying so (laughs) without further ado this one's doomsday procedure
felt good to be alive <laughs> felt really good to be alive right there <laughs> so uh as you were playing i was just trying to think of you know different kinds of music that i've i've listened to in the past and your style uh really resonates with a very younger version of myself <laughs> because i was so obsessed with post hardcore Whenever I was growing up, like I got really into Fugazi. Dude, I just um, started like literally not no joke last night. I like started actually peeking through Fugazi stuff. Really? Yeah, dude, they're, they're fucking tight. They're pr- they're probably like my favorite band. I mean, just the the ethos uh, in general. I mean they they were a band in the late eighties, and um, they came into the music scene around the same time that grunge blew up. Yeah. And they were just as popular as a lot of the grunge bands. Um, and they were doing stuff that the grunge bands started doing, you know, like, you know, uh, kind of around the same time. Like, th- they're a very interesting band from the standpoint that they, even though they had a lot of, like, noise elements, um, because another band that you that you guys kind of remind me of uh, I, I think more it's actually like kind of a closer um comparison is a band called unwound i'm not sure if you've ever heard of them mm-hmm. so they're a noise band uh they're also a they're like they were so if you look at their wikipedia page <laughs> <laughs> they're classified as a noise band yeah. but really they're a post hardcore band too and um in a lot of the same ways that like helmet and um I don't know if you ever heard of the band uh, Quicksand, but Helmet, Quicksand, uh, they were sort of all in the same genre. But Unwound is kind of a, um, it's kind of been forgotten about, but they came from like the Seattle area. Yeah. And they were really popular for like a good, I don't know, four or five years, right? But compared to the other bands like Jawbox and Helmet, and quicksand they didn't get nearly as much attention as them so they kind of fell off of the radar not a whole lot of people knew who they were but uh that genre in particular was just like really influential on me and was just um such a it's such a nostalgic like feeling listening to you guys play (laughs) because because uh i know that my 17 year old self would be you know all about this rock out this cock out (laughs) i I can dig that i think it kind of we kind of sound like that just because like i i grew up listening to like a lot of slipknot like i mean like i have a slipknot tattoo on my chest like i don't know the theme but like i also don't have Corey taylor vocals so i kind of have to like make it work somehow but (laughs) but i mean i'm also like a super big uh, stoner rock guy, like I really like Queens of the Stone Age. Uncle Acid's my favorite band of all time, and uh, mm. just kind of like basically trying to make stoner, but like more metal, but not as like you know electric wizardy, because that's just kind of like right a little too far for me. Because it's like, all right, yeah, you're playing power chords and all that jazz. Yeah, uh. post hardcore is an interesting genre because it sort of 
diverged from the, the, the late 80s, early 90s, and it kind of became something that pop punk artists started to get really yeah. influenced by. And so you have this weird spinoff with post-hardcore. Y- you notice that a lot of post-hardcore elements are actually rooted in grunge music because um, a lot of the, uh, the, band, the post-hardcore bands were actually doing what Buzz Osborne from the Melvins yeah. was doing, essentially, by taking metal and turning it into something a little bit more doom sounding. Yeah. With, the, with that heavy kind of like, you know, single coil fuzz tone. Right. And, make, and making it sound like using, so blown out and awesome. Right. right like yeah. using black Sabbath elements and yeah. turning it into something much darker. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and so post hardcore did that in a lot of ways. Um, but then post hardcore, as I was like a, I don't know, like in my early 20s, it kind of became some like balancing composure and uh, kind of turned into what some of the screamo bands sort of like a lot of that stuff kind of crosses over. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, totally. Um, but like the, the, like Fugazi though in particular, they kind of just kept going and started adding so many different elements. Yeah, to they, their, dude, to their I, I skipped around their albums and it was just like the, like the the array of sounds that they get from just you know writing a different album it, it i know it sounds stupid and very obvious but like they do it so fluidly mm-hmm. you know right. cuz they like the first one that i was looking at the one that came out in like 89 was like it was like punk you know raw and then i was listening to like almost like a kind of piano melody one that's like one of their top songs i was like what yeah <laughs> you know they kind of hop around but they do it well yeah, they're, they're very talented guys. But, um, you know, it's funny you were mentioning Queens of the Stone Age because some of those kind of radio, f- radio-friendly radio rock bands mm-hmm. took a lot of elements from post-hardcore. Oh, yeah. And, the, you know, just grunge in general. And they, uh, they kind of packaged it in a more accessible way. Like, I would say um, System of the Down was very very much, you know, influenced by that same um, kind of movement. Uh-huh. In, no, in I, way, I can and know? I can totally see that with System of a Down just because like, you know, I mean their first album is just so wacky <laughs> and kind of <laughs> right. just like, you know, they they're, they're like singing but it's like these like weird shuffle beats and like a lot of you know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. Not always super distorted guitars like they get like they've gotten to be known for. Mm-hmm. Gotten to be known for. Whatever. I don't know. I never really dove down the hardcore path. I kind of was really into grunge and like Alice yeah. in Chains is a pretty good. Uh, mm. Oh, like, same. Okay, yeah. yeah. Love, I love Alice. Love That's that. my favorite. Yeah. So, so you're a grunge guy, I Riley. Are it. are you? Uh, what's your music taste? I have noticed that drummers have like that. A lot of times they play in bands where their music taste is so different from what the band actually <laughs> is. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious. Uh, yeah, I don't. It's hard to choose a favorite, like. I really enjoy jazz a lot. I think the musicality in that is something that's very hard to replicate in other uh, genres. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm also very into, like, you're talking about Uncle Acid. It, when we first started talking together, he showed me that band, and I was like, yes, yes, I, yeah. I, I did this. And <laughs> King Dizzard cool. is one of my favorite bands. I definitely hear that come through in yes. your music, too. That's it, cool. You probably will continue late, to late, hear that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> we, we have one song where it's like, it's like, how hard did we rip it? No, I mean we didn't like rip the lick, but it's like very, very stylistically, it's very, it's very, very similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Uh, well, let's go ahead and go into the the next one. You said you have an EP out now, right? Oh, we're in the process of uh, finishing it up. Yeah, it's I'd say another month, hopefully. Yeah, I'd, I'd say about a month, maybe a month and a half till it's out. All right. Hopefully, snafu baby but situation. We do have moment. a single out, which was the last song we played, Doomsday Procedure. So. And if you want to hear it, perf- like per- it's on perfect, it's on it's on Spotify. Platforms, I think, Spotify, YouTube, oh, okay. the whole shit. Shazam, <laughs> awesome, Pandora. Shazam, dude. It's on Siri Music. It's on Napster, <laughs> dude. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, keeping with the whole same kind of theme, uh, this one's called Bomb Threat. Thank you. 
a quick one i'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> you know we're just say we're just saving all the, the long dramatic ones towards the end that way it's like oh my god they're like really thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome so uh have you guys been uh taking a break from shows or you guys still got a Still been booking through the holidays? We actually, yeah, we did take a break from shows. I mean, we played uh, Bad Dad Jokes last show. Uh, they're, they're I did see that show happening. That was, yeah. uh, I didn't realize they were finally calling it quits. Yeah, because, huh. you know, I think, you know, Carter's doing, like, New Avenue stuff. And, yeah, it's, I saw her playing bass in there. And they all just have their own stuff. You know, Rogers and Dusma, Sam Fars and Havnir. I I always fuck up their name so hard. I always get them swapped because it's like they're two, you know, two-word names. I, I'm sorry if I fucked it up, but mm. I mean, they're all like, they're all crazy talented musicians, and they're all so busy musicians. Like, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, playing. I've I've had m lots of friends that I mean, all they do is just play in multiple bands, and the most I could manage myself was like two bands and even then i felt i felt like i was always half-assing one of them yeah. you know so uh, i don't know how they do it but um yeah it stinks that that's another good local band that you know they've it's gone yeah it's gone. Gone. they're gone <laughs> gone forever but um well so do you have uh shows booked we actually do. We have one that we're pretty excited about. It's uh, with uh, Maestro Maya, Same Brain, and I don't know what the... It's a Japanese, like, avant-garde punk band. What's their name? All right, I'll take that answer. We don't know their name, but uh, we we're playing... Uh, where are we playing? The Post in Fort Worth. The Post in Fort Worth on what date? Friday, 3-14. 3-14. You heard it from this guy's lips, through mine, and into this microphone and XLR cable. <laughs> that one's going to be a really fun show, man. Uh, honestly, just because the guy's in... Maestro May are just, we played with them last June and they just showed us so much love and they're like, 
literally so good at setting atmosphere in the music. They're just they're fucking mm-hmm. badasses. Yeah, I have. I feel like I've heard of that band. Um, what was the other band on the bill? Same brain. I, Same brain. That band. I heard of them like like three or four years yeah. ago. I yeah, didn't realize they were members. still around. That's cool. Yeah, and I haven't. They don't have anything released, so I didn't. You know, I didn't get to take a gander at their music. Mm. Which I honestly think that's kind of fucking badass. They're just like, no, nah, we're just playing shows. <laughs> mm. like, yeah, I, I mean that's uh, that's a really good way to do that in my opinion especially now just because um whenever it comes to releasing music uh, a lot of the times you can like be too accessible as a band Mm -hmm. and people stop listening to you because you know especially with, with bands that only release singles yeah um i i have noticed that the more frequent listeners if they really enjoy your music, they would like a little bit more than just a single, you know? So, um, but that, you know, that's cool. Uh, whenever they ever do decide and decide to release something, I mean, I'm sure they're going to have a good audience. Oh yeah. And it's going to just be, cause I mean, cause I met, um, Gabe in college as well. And I mean, 2018 and that dude was rocking the same brain sticker on his Jeep. Like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't, I know they've been playing shows like sporadically, but you know, I haven't even seen anything like that. And I think, yeah, like you were saying, like being too accessible is kind of, uh, it almost a turn off. Being exclusive, people like feeling special. Right, people, yeah, you know, exactly. People are like, oh, yeah. I know about this band, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a term that I, I heard recently uh, on a podcast that I thought was, really interesting and it's radical exclusion (laughs) so uh but anyways uh so what's the name of this next song and uh where can we listen to you guys again just remind the Uh, listeners spotify youtube apple music music uh text me if you want the demos (laughs) Um, but trying to get CDs up so we can sell those yeah. at shows, but it's yeah. a it's a process. It's a bit of a process. Yeah, it's it's you know, albeit. Uh, but we do have an EP out called Scraps that we put out <laughs> a while ago. A and while, just, a while ago. It's just our intro, kind of like yeah, we're this is us. We've got music, but you know, it's it was a while back, so it's it's all we got right now, except for the new single that we just released. It, it um, aged like a, a Miller Lite after a long night of partying, <laughs> where you, like, you don't want to drink it, and you're like, oh, it's kind of flat. That's about how it aged. I mean, some people are into that, man. I, I would be. I would be. If I, if I was trying to cure a hangover, I would totally do that. No, but uh, this next song is uh, called Change. It's a little bit more loosey-goosey chill until it gets to n- not be chill. So let's kick her off. Oh, that was the best way to say that. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> this song is called Change. <laughs> Thank you. 
guess I'll run away but Don't you say another word I know it's all absurd I guess I'll run away Dude, your cab's dead. I'm sorry. Huh? <laughs> 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 well. <laughs> well. So uh, I've asked a couple of Denton bands this, but um, I remember Gabe talking about how he threw a a house show <laughs> once. Yeah. Have you guys uh, participated in any house shows? We we Reason. have we played at at a West Oak House or slash Randy's slash Randy's we'll just call it Randy's and just forget that I said a street name, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put a beep on that. That'd be sick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we we played there. Honestly, not one of our best shows, just because like I I don't know. We just didn't have the sauce that night. It was technical failures and yeah. Yeah, like my guitar, I had just gotten these, his this originally had humbuckers, so I just got it rewired, and the wiring was all fucked up, and then his kit was like falling apart for some reason, and then Gary was just a beautiful little angel that did everything right. <laughs> <laughs> but not tonight, buddy. That's funny. Well, uh, yeah, I've been very disconnected from the house show scene for a while now, um, so I have not been to a house show in a very long time, but for uh, whenever I stopped going to house shows, they all started to shut down. So yeah. uh, I've always just been curious about like Denton bands and how they feel about doing house shows now. Because I, I personally like each band is a little different now. I've noticed. I'm, <laughs> unless you take the ring, because he actually is like big into the house show. Well, I, I live there, so I, I oh. kind of help. At yeah, he lives at Randy's. <laughs> cool, Randy. uh, I, I do like the house show scene. I think a couple years ago, or maybe like around 2018, 2019, it was a lot bigger than it was now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been kind of slowly building kind of since COVID. But uh, right now, it's, it's a pretty good time. There's a bunch of houses popping up and a lot of bands taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have our EP release show, probably in like April or something, 
uh, that would be a house show, and that would be really fun. And awesome. You know, so I don't know. It's I like it. It's not everyone's favorite, but mm, yeah. well, it's also kind of weird just because I didn't realize this before, or I guess maybe just I don't know. It, it seems like it would be a thing before, but like I, I've noticed that everything's kind of segmented. Like there, there's different house shows for different genres. Like there's different house like because they live next to like kind of like an EDM kind of ravey house, and they actually we, we borrow sound equipment from there, like like monitors and speakers and. Hmm. It, but I'll tell you this: those motherfuckers all like they'll have a show the night before. We'll go pick up the gear, and that shit is like spotless. Like they like clean that house. It's so crazy. <laughs> but um, wow. Yeah, I, I don't know if that was a thing before, but yeah, everything's kind of everybody's found their own little niche. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, so go ahead and just introduce this last song and take us out. Last song. Man, 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 man. Well, uh. This one, uh, don't worry, it's not one of those things where we're just playing it for the first time. We just don't even have a title for it, but we love playing it. We think it's a sick riff, uh, but we call it Banana Man because it goes banana, banana. So this one's called... Uh, like that Tolly Hall song, Banana Man, you yep, know what I'm saying? But not as, not as good and not, as not, not the same at all. Not, not the same at all and not going to make us not gonna make us any fucking money. Dude, covering Banana Man by Tolly Hall. <laughs> we should do that. All right, you ready? That's your sweet pippy I am. I thought it was gonna hit Earth. Delicate Steve.
Thank you guys. Thank All you. right. Thank you for watching After Dark from the Den. That was Sour Starhead. And that, Woo. And that is Michael Zamora. <laughs> and that is an awfully hot coffee. coffee pot. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, just thank you for everything you guys do for the community. You guys are badass. Thank you. Thanks.